Good morning, everyone. Hello. Uh, Happy New Year, first of all, and I hope you're able to get some rest over the holidays. My name is Chloe Gordon. I'm the GM of the clinical business here at Evident. And today we have a fantastic guest on our webinar, uh, Dr. Anthony Manito, who, as we've called the king of CAD CAM, who's here to uh, answer all our questions. He's going to let us pick our brain on uh, digital dentistry. So uh, thanks for joining us today, Dr. Manito. Happy to be here. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, I know. It's going to be a great conversation. So Dr. Manito has a long resume of uh, accomplishments and experiences, including, you know, he was the, uh, and I don't want to get this wrong, he was previously the Associate Professor at the Medical University of Southern California. Um, he's lectured all over the world. He works with all the top name, uh, you know, manufacturers in dental. And uh, something that I think is pretty cool is he co-founded a biotech startup that looks at the longevity of dental restorations. Um, and I could go on and on, but Dr. Mio, why don't you share a little bit about yourself um, with our audience today? So I always, I always, that all that stuff sounds cool. I, I'm just a general dentist. That's really all I am who, ha who happen to be um, in some good positions to learn some cool stuff like CAD CAM, for instance, back when it was just starting out and, um, and, you know, have had some great mentors who have, who have helped me along the way. And, and, at, but at my heart, I, I fix teeth and that's, you know, so I'm just like any other general dentist. Um, you know, I have, I have good days, I have bad days, um, but I love, love, love what I do. And there's nothing better than digital dentistry. Uh, it is so happy to talk about it with y'all here today. Awesome. We feel the exact same way about, about digital dentistry. It's a pretty cool time right now to be, to be where yeah. we're at. So but before we jump into it, I always like to start with the poll to see, you know, who do we have in our audience? You know, kind of who are we talking to? So a quick question if people want to just take a second and click. So how digital is your practice? Uh, let us know. We'll quick click and then uh, and then off we go. So just a few more seconds and then, all right, if you haven't clicked now, I'm just gonna close this off my screen. All right, there we go. We'll see, we'll see what the answers are. So let's, let's start at the beginning. So first things first, how, how did you get started in uh, digital dentistry? Well, when I graduated from dental school, I, I went into private practice in a small town in South Carolina for seven years. And, and it, it was the lowest tech practice that you can possibly imagine. Like the coolest piece of technology that we had was our curing light. Um, <laughs> nothing was digital. It was so uh, it was absolutely like lowest level of technology. And then I had an opportunity to go teach at the medical university in 2009. And when I got there, I met a guy named Wallace. He was like, hey, man, I'm thinking about seeing if we can get some CAD CAM systems in our school. You'd be interested in learning that? And I was, you know, brand new. I was like, yeah, why not? So at the time, what we got was was the E4D system. Um, and, uh, and we also had a blue cam. So we had kind of a CEREC system and a, and a Plameca or an E4D at the time. And we just started playing around with it and, and learning how to use it. Um, and that was basically 2010. I did, did my very first case on a newspaper reporter who had broken her tooth and she wrote an article on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just found the article when I cleaned out my office, uh, the other day. Um, but you know, it was, it, it was just kind of a, uh, happenstance thing that I met this guy named Wally Renee. He was interested in, in it and kind of nurtured that interest in me as well. So that's, that's where it all started for me. Yeah, it's kind of that just natural, natural curiosity. I find that's kind of just what, what it takes to get started. And Definitely. so we were talking a little bit, a little bit about this before you, before we started the webinar about um, workflows, you know, so that seems to be the biggest question about like, what do you have? What works? What doesn't work? You know, what should I buy? So to kind of start that conversation, what, what do you use? You know, what, what do you, what's your setup? <laughs> That that's a it, at the university we we literally have everything, Chloe. And I said I was so spoiled for ten years because 
If I wanted to scan with an iTero, I could scan with an iTero. If I wanted to scan with a Medit, I'd go grab the Medit. Literally, we had every scanner, every mill, every 3D printer. I mean, it was, it was right? And, and that was a great situation, but it was almost like it was too much. It was yeah. too much. So in my practice, what I have, what, what I determined from that is that I love open systems, okay? Open systems for me is where it's at because it gives you freedom to do whatever you want, right? Your your imagination is the only limit to what you can do with that data. So an open system is basically where you have control of your STL files. You can take them in, you can move them out, you can take them from one software and put them into another. And that for me, that kind of freedom um, is where I live because I love being able to scan on one system, take it out, those STLs out move it into mesh mixer, take it out of mesh mixer, put it into ExoCAD or plan and do my design, take those STLs and mill them from my mill. That is, that is for me, that's like bread and butter. That's how I, that's how I work. So I love open systems. And so I really fell in love with plan Mecca's CAD CAM system because of the openness of it in the very beginning. Um, CEREC has gotten much better as far as CAD CAM systems, as far as um, being able to export STLs, um, but they're still, you're still limited in what you can do um, with a CEREC. So, so can you, sorry, sorry to interrupt there, um, question back to the CEREC because uh, we get this a lot at the design center. So you can export an STL out of your CEREC. It's more, what can you import back in, right? Correct. So okay. the, the issue the issue that you have with the CEREC is that you, you can't get a design from Evident, for instance, and put it into your chair side CEREC software to then mill it on your MCXL, all right? It just won't let you do that. You have to have their lab software called InLab in order to be able to take that design and feed it into the milling um, software. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so that's, that's, you know, that's a little bit of a hang up. And I, you know, all things being equal, uh, I'd rather have a system where I can where I can do things freely with purchase additional software or or even pay to export. You know, I I don't love paying you know per export or a monthly fee to join a club or things like that. So um, I try to simplify things as much as possible. But this is a very long answer to what was a simple question, Chloe, and that is. Um, I use Plan Mecca. I have two scanners in my practice. I have an Emerald S and I have an iTero. We do an Invisalign in my practice. So I have the iTero for that. Um, but the Plan Mecca Emerald S is the scanner that I use for my restorative. And I mill probably 90 to 95% of all my, all my restorations in-house. Got it. Got it. And, you know, kind of along the same vein of what you were saying, uh, you know, when we talk to doctors who are just getting started with their workflows or setting up that digital workflow, we say the same thing, right? Like go open because you don't, you don't know what you don't know at this point, right? Yeah. So don't lock yeah. yourself in, you know, you're going to change things up as you know what works for you. So if you go open, you have more flexibility in changing things up essentially. And That's the exactly question that. that we have here is what, for, for our audience, what do you mean by open? You know, what's the difference between open and closed? So, like I said, open is just the ability to, to say you take a scan, okay? You, whatever scanner you have, you take a scan of a patient and creates that digital file. What can you do with that digital file? In a closed system, it's very linear, right? So you say you have a CEREC, you take um, your scan, you can send it into the CEREC design software and from the CEREC design software can send it to a CEREC mill. So it's all along that linear line of all within the same brand and the same software. And that works well for a lot of people. But as you grow and as you wanna do more than just maybe single unit dentistry with your CAD CAM system, having an open software means that you can scan in your CEREC, you can export to a different design have evident, right, design a case for you and then bring that back into an open milling system to mill those restorations or 3D print those restorations um, for you. So it just gives you a lot more flexibility. It doesn't pin you into doing the work in your office on your system. Uh, it just, it's all about flexibility. 
Great. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> good, good answer. Uh, all right. A few more questions here. Uh, so you've tested all the 3D printers out there. Which printer would you consider to be the best investment? So this is a question I get all the time, and I get it on scanners, mills, printers. <laughs> and the, the, the way that I answer it is I, I can't answer it, right? I, I don't know what you want to do with that printer. Because there are some printers, if all you want to do is 3D print a model, you could buy, you know, a printer off Amazon to 3D print your model. It would work just fine. And spend a couple hundred bucks for it. If you want to print final restorations, right, or long-term temporary shell temps, things like that, things you need to fit and look good, you're going to need to buy a printer that's got a really nice accuracy that's got a lot of good materials that it's been validated uh, with. Um, so, you, so it really isn't, you know, it's, that's really not one a question that I can answer. Same with scanner. I don't know what you want to do with that scanner. So I can't answer that. Your practice is different than my practice. So um, I would say do a little research, um, talk to some people who have some different 3D printers, find out what they're doing and really think about what you want to do with it. Not just today, but try to think ahead a little bit. All right. In a year, am I going to want to be doing more? And the answer is you probably are. Um, we all start with kind of the bait and a basic idea of what we want to do. But a lot of times we can grow really quickly with our technology once we get comfortable, which is the great thing about it. So I really can't answer that question. I have a um, I have a D4K Pro right now that I love, an uh, Envision Tech. Um, Red Pro is is you know pretty nice printer. I've used that in the past. The Asiga is a good printer. I mean, there's a lot of really nice printers out there. You got to look at what materials they have um, that they're able to print, um, and you got to talk to some people who who maybe have a similar practice philosophy as you. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's not a straightforward question. And, and when people ask ask us that question, you know, some things we kind of put back to them is uh, you know, it's are you gonna delegate it? How much tinkering do you want to do? Like, are you just you want to get in there and like do your settings, or you just want to be like plug and play? So yeah, so yeah. many things to consider. So that's a great yeah, point about the plug and play. Yeah, exactly. So, so when, like, I guess, what's the biggest challenge you think dentists uh, face when they are moving into digital? Um, I mean, to make the decision to, to make the purchase and then to stick with it, right? So that first little, yeah. that first little learning curve is, is the hardest thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's the hardest thing. Once you get over that, you're, you're cruising, but a lot of dentists, you know, you, 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 that little bit of a learning curve gets them out of their comfort zone and they'll, they'll instead revert back to the way they used to do it. Cause that's where they're comfortable. So you just have to make the commitment. All right. Yeah. Just like I did. All right. 12 years ago, even if it takes you 35 minutes, my first intraoral scan took 35 minutes to capture four teeth, right? 35 minutes. Ridiculous. But you just have to say, I'm going to stick with it. We're going to get over this learning curve train your people and incentivize them to help you in your digital workflows. I think that's very important as well. Um, and as a, as an office, make the commitment to, to adopt the technology. Um, and once you, you get comfortable with that first piece, each additional piece that you add, it's a little easier, a little easier, a little easier. Yeah, completely agreed. And and I noticed in uh, when we were doing our original poll, probably the majority of the audience scans and sends to a lab. And so I'm, I'm gonna like switch things up here. I don't even know how this is gonna work, but for everyone in the audience, in the Q and A or in the chat, type in like, uh, are you interested in going digital? And if so, like, why not? Or like, what are the roadblocks that you faced or that you think you're facing? Um, I'd love to like, just hear from everyone else there and we'll all kind of read them out as people, um, as people type it in. Um, so I'm just gonna, move this over and let's see, let's see what people say. And uh, it could be good. And I'm just going to call Sorry. Adam White. I see you there. So uh, I want to hear from you as well. So while we wait for those people to uh, write, let's, um, let's jump into some more questions. So 
this is a question I always love to hear everyone answer. Everyone's answer is, you know, what's the next big thing in dentistry? There is so much out there, but from the printers, the resins, like where, where's the next innovation going to be? There's a lot of discussion right now about AI. So um, a lot of things being automated um, with as far as design, for instance, right? Um, right now, design is a very much a hands-on thing. Um, there's a little bit of automation that's starting to trickle into that process, but um, but at, for the most part, there's a there's a good bit of of a, of a human touch that's still required to do uh, design work. I think as AI becomes a little bit better and better, you're going to start seeing that um, get more and more automated. I think which will help I think a lot of the, a lot of the ways people are going to answer the question you just asked is is they're a little bit nervous about getting into designing their own restorations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I think AI is a big thing. And then I think 3D printing is honestly going to absolutely explode in the next year or two. The materials are starting to really get better and better to the point where they're, um, you know, we're talking about 3D, guys, we're talking about 3D printing permanent dentistry, but permanent restorations in your 3D bonkers, right? Bonkers. That's where we are today. Can you imagine where we'll be in a year or two years? That the R and D is is right now really exploding as far as those materials. So I think those two things, AI and design, and other areas as well, and and three D printing. Yeah, it's like when you really think about it, it's it's nuts. And, and you know, to touch on that kind of material side of things, what are your thoughts on that three uh, D printable aligner material? Do you know much about it? The graphy one. I know a little bit about it, what I've heard, um, but I, I know that it's it's been pretty pretty well received. I've not had my hands on it. I've not used it myself. Um, but I, I, what I hear people saying is pretty good. And obviously that is, that is uh, that's a huge time saver. That is a, that is a big deal for th people who 3D print because a lot of Right now, the process is kind of tedious, right? You've got someone who has to 3D print the models, who has to do the, the physical suck down of the material, cut it out. If you can streamline that, that is a absolute game changer for a lot of people. So, you know, God bless them. I know, I know a lot of companies are working on, on that type of a material. Um, the thing that, that I'm interested in learning is how does it, how is it compared from a, um, elasticity standpoint, right? As far as if we're asking these materials to stay in the mouth for a week at a time, like we would say an Invisalign type workflow, uh, are they holding their shape well enough over the course of that week to really be effective? Um, you know, but once again, uh, here we are. It's only a matter of time before somebody figures it out. And that's going to be a huge, huge um, tool for, for a lot of the general dentists, I think. Oh, yeah, it's, it's going to be nuts. So here we go. So one uh, the I guess, barrier some people are having is the staff members are resistant. You know, any, any suggestions on how to, how to manage that type of situation? I, I kind of alluded to it before, but it's, if everything comes from the dentist. So a lot of times what happens, at least what I've seen, is that you get a piece of technology and the dentist is like, I'm, I'm going to let you guys do this, okay? This design, the scanner, that's going to be your thing, right? Whereas the reality is me as the dentist, I need to be the expert on that technology because chances are good that I'm going to have some turn, turnover in my staff over the course of the years. And as maybe I train a super rock star, you know, scanner, designer, um, stain and glazer, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, they leave for whatever reason. And then that shuts the whole operation down because me as a dentist, I don't know how to do that stuff. I trained, you know, uh, my assistant to do that. So you as a dentist need to train yourself first become the expert in the office first and then you can tr that can trickle down because inevitably you have problems all right i know technology i mean with my with my iphone you know this thing gives me headaches every once in a while stuff is going to happen when you have technology they're going to come to you as the dentist mm -hmm. and they're going to say hey doctor so and so this isn't working 
And you, if you if you just say, I don't know, call tech, you know, it's gonna it's just gonna drag everybody down. So you have to be the expert as a dentist. Everything will trickle down from you, and you just let it be known. Hey, this is this is how we're gonna do it. I'm here to support you. I am gonna I am gonna be the expert. I will train you. I'm here to support you. We're going to do this as an office. And that has worked really well for me over the years. That's, that's, such, a, that's such a good point, you know, leading, um, leading by example. Uh, and then I saw a few more in here. Let's see here. Uh, biggest roadblock is where to start. Uh, that's a good, that's a good question. That's a really good question. And I, <clears throat> I get this question a lot. What what should the first piece of technology that I buy be? <clears throat> and I don't know the answer. Once again, I don't know how you practice, but I will tell you some of the really good answers that I've gotten. My first inclination is always an intraoral scanner because you have you can't can't start down the digital pathway if you don't digitize the patient's mouth, right? Yeah. So that the 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 scanner is the kind of the gateway um, into you know, creating a digital of your patient. You've got to have the scanner. But the other thing about that is the CBCT is often overlooked in this equation because what a CBCT does allows you to do is diagnose more effectively. So if you're new in a practice or if you're looking for something to really help your ROI, a CBCT just shows you far more and allows you then to treatment plan more and to do more dentistry. So that's an answer that a lot of people that I really give into that question. And I think that makes a lot of sense as well. So those would be maybe the two, two first um, ones that I would consider. Once you have a, once you have a scanner, once you have a CBCT, then it's just a matter of what else, what else do you want to do? Right. Um, a 3D printer makes a lot of sense. Point is not bad for that. Uh, and it allows you to start creating some physical um, things, right, from your digital, um, your digitization of your patients. So um, it just opens up a lot of avenues for, for workflows. Um, I will tell you what I do most of the time, and I did when I was at the university, is uh, I would have pay, uh, students do intraoral scans on their new patients and we would do smile designs, right? Is patient interested in um, improving their smile? A lot of people are. Um, we would just have them scan it. We throw it into PlanCAD Premium, which is basically ExoCAD, do a quick wax up, 3D print that model and have that for the patient to, to look at. That's a really simple thing that can create a lot of dentistry in your practice, the ability to kind of show patients what's possible in a, in a timely manner. And wax ups are are in, are designing yes, but it with with certain softwares, it's it's kind of an easy design, right? It's kind of like putting denture teeth in place. Um, we've all done that in dental school. So, um, so Chloe, I don't even remember what the original question was, but I hope you answered it. Where do you start? All right, scanner good. or CVCD? So, but now right. you know, giving right. giving that context is. Um, is really important. So uh, it was all valuable information. And, and you know what, we see the same thing at Evident, you know, um, when we say that, when we say the same thing, right, scanner, and then, you know, it's that design roadblock. And so, uh, you know, that's where, you know, we can come in and, uh, you know, help educate and help the team understand, you know, how everything fits together and uh, design those restorations for them. Yeah, and awesome. then the Let's see here. What do we got here? So does going digital help you get more patients or has it helped you get more patients? Absolutely. Um, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of times when patients will come to me and they've never had a CAD cam experience before, for instance. Mm -hmm. So they come to me and they have an expectation that the crown is going to take two visits. And when I tell them that, in fact, we can get it done in one visit. It's just, they're like, what do you mean? Like, I'm like, yeah, we have the technology to make it here in the office. Mm -hmm. And then, so they're like, oh, okay. Is it as good as what? And I'm like, it's better than what your lab can give you. Right? <laughs> Hopefully there's no lab listening. But the reality is I've got the patient in the chair, right? I'm the one who prepped the tooth. So I know where that margin is. 
I know what the shade of the tube is going to be. I know what standing and glazing pattern to make it look like it belongs there. I, I have every advantage over the lab technician who's, you know, hundreds of miles away and all they have is a an STL or a or a PDS impression. So it should be, it should be as good, if not better, um, than what a lab can produce, because I have all those advantages. Mm -hmm. um, and so yes, patients are are really impressed by that. Um, you know, how well you market that is is gonna determine, you know, how many people come to see you. And and I guess the other part um do patients really understand how technology plays a part uh, in dentistry? So it's it's really a matter of educating your patients. Mm -hmm. um, we 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 show all our new patients um, the technology throughout the office, and we talk about what we can do as far as you know. One of the great things about CAT CAM is we can do conservative dentistry. We can do partial coverage. Uh, we don't have to. I don't have to worry about temporizing inlays and onlays. I can do them in a single visit, and that's a huge advantage. So we talk about how we can save two structure over kind of more conventional dentistry and things like that. So there's, it's just a matter of kind of marketing well and educating your patients. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, next question here. Is there a line you draw for how many units of crown work you will do with single visit dentistry? Yes. Um, I've not been good at drawing that line in the past, but what I learned the hard way uh, is that you have, it's honestly a patient by patient thing because you have some who will come in and they have crowns all throughout the front that have been done at different points throughout their life. And they're all different materials and they're all different colors, right? And they don't care. They could care less, right? So those patients, if you're doing it, I, I'm pretty sure I can improve upon what's there. And then you have your supermodels who come in, right? And they already have a beautiful smile, but maybe they, you know, there's a couple things about their smile that they, uh, that they don't like. And so you have conservative veneers or things like that. No chance I'm doing that myself in office. I'm going to, I'm going to outsource that to the pros. I'm going to let them do that. Um, cause they are very, very good at what they do, uh, and can do a much better job. So part of it is understanding what, what your own abilities are in your office as far as um, matching existing restorations, uh, matching existing tooth structure, um, and, and honestly, what you're, what you're willing to take on as far as your stress level. Because you know, if you take on a six unit case of one mil, all right, it's gonna take a long time for each of those crowns to mill individually. So it's gonna be a very long day. So you just have to kind of understand the pros and cons of a situation like that. I, I will personally now only really do single visit, uh, two, two restorations, right? Back to back, sometimes three if it's posterior and a quad, but I honestly would prefer to, to and take my time with, with the when I have that many that are in, uh, in line. Okay, thank you. And so I'm just looking at the time, we're gonna do one more question. Uh, and let's see, this is like, like a riddle kind of, okay. So I'm an associate, <laughs> the office owner has a CBCT, a CEREC mm -hmm. and a form labs printer that is not used mm -hmm. at all. Is there a way for me to combine them to do wax up and design or, and to design smiles or are they all non-compatible? So, I mean, your form labs is, is completely open. Um, Exporting an STL of a design out of a CEREC, as far as I know, is not possible unless you have in lab, lab. right? The lab software. So you're going to have time with that. Um, you, can, you can export your, your STLs of your um, and bring them into a free software uh, mesh mixer, Blue Sky Bio like that and do the design in there. Uh, those are a little more tedious, um, a little more difficult to work with. You can uh, export your STLs and send them to Evident. Uh, they will design it for you. And then you can 3D print the model of your wax up and have that to use uh, to create a putty, putty matrix off of. Um, that's a really, that's a simple workflow right there. Um, really, really easy low stress workflow is to have someone else do the design work. You, you can print that model yourself. You can have them 
um, either way. But if you have the printer, you might as well might as well put it to use. Chloe, is that something you would do? You guys give them the STLs back to print themselves? Exactly. Right. We or the the design file we uh, send back to them, and then they can yeah print printer mill whatever they have in their practice. So you know that you just let us know how you're going to fabricate, and then we design uh, design accordingly. You know based on the material you're going to be using. Perfect. So yeah, it's a, you know it's a matter of uh, understanding what you can do with your with your system, whatever system you have, and where where you need to pull the STLs out and to put it, once again, it's the difference between open and closed. Um, it's really nice having an open system. You don't even have to think about it. You can, you can total freedom. So um, that's the nice thing about those open systems. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I completely agree. I'm looking at the time. We are one minute over. Uh, no. I, I, I have so many more questions and there's, I'm leaving a bunch unanswered here, but uh, you know, we, we need to do this again, Dr. Mito, and, uh, you know, continue this conversation. It's been fantastic. Uh, we have our last poll, everyone here. Feel free to click in there and let us know, um, let us know that info. But in the meantime, Dr. Mito, thank you so, so much. This was uh, a great conversation. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Pleasure. Fantastic. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. So everyone have a great day. Uh, it's Friday, so I hope you have a good weekend and we'll see you next week. Bye everybody. See you guys.